Good morning, folks. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to give everybody a few moments to gather back together, and I'll explain what has happened. Um, so just bear with us for a few moments while folks regather, rejoin. Um, hello, Melissa. I will explain in just a moment what has happened, um, giving folks an opportunity to rejoin. Um, it's uh, tech, not a technical difficulty. Uh, unfortunately, um, there are rules and protocols that have to be followed, that must be followed. And um, if you don't follow those rules and protocols, then um, there is a price to be paid. Uh, I can see folks are logging back in. Welcome, folks. Um, I'll explain shortly um, as uh, folks start to gather back in. Um, I'll explain what happened. Uh, it's good that, oh, good. Folks are coming back online. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Um, good. Jim and Lila are back with us. Wonderful to see that. I think Melissa may be back with us and her family. Um, yeah, um, please um, join back in. And again, um, is it that we want them to share, Major Linda? Is that what we want them to do? Share, share this please. page. Yeah, share this page. Um, let folks know that we're back online. Um, we're back uh, to um, our online service. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Good to see that you're back. Um, yeah, just um, folks are coming back online. And I'm um, just going to wait for a few more minutes, uh, giving folks the opportunity to um, get back with us. And I will share um, what has happened. Um, and why we lost our feed. Um, it's a very simple answer, but uh, an important protocol. Um, good. Ever, the cars are back with us. Good. Um, good. Wilson's are back. Marilyn is back. The Wilsons are back. Good. Thank you all. Uh, get back with us. Um, share it. Uh, let folks know that we are back online. Uh, you know, in the Citrus County Corps, um, hey, Scott. Hey, it's good to see you. I'm glad that you're with us. Um, uh, we're not um, immune from technical difficulties and seems like most Sundays there's a dead battery in the microphone or a switch we forgot to flip and it didn't come on. And I'll explain in a moment, um, once uh, folks are back, uh, what happened to our service, why it was interrupted. Um, I see that we um, the number keeps getting higher and higher. Um, we're glad to see that. Um, sweetie, do you think we're back to where we should be or we still, give it looks few, like. Give it a few more minutes. Yeah, we'll give it a few more minutes. We'll give folks a few more minutes to um, get uh, back online. Um, yeah, my uh, thing has stopped, so I can't see who else is scrolling and coming on. Um, but uh, I'll give folks just an opportunity um, to get online and to. Um, we'll. I'll explain what has happened. Um, our our feed was interrupted, um, and so. Um, just giving folks a, a few more minutes to get back with us uh, before I explain what happened. Um, nothing drastic, but a reality of life and something that uh, it's a lesson well learned. Um, Nancy is back with us. Excellent. You've got a lot of people. On. Yeah, good, good. So, um, you know, Set when we first started this, uh, when we first started the um, online services, um, Lindsey Crossland from Divisional Headquarters, our um, communications person, uh, said that we need to be very careful about what we use on Facebook, um, especially as far as the music is concerned. 
Um, we have to be careful about what music is played. If we don't own the copyright, um, then it's possible that our feed could be interrupted. Uh, worst case scenario is that Facebook would shut our feed down, our site down. Um, in fact, I had a couple of folks um, who um, sent me some um, information saying, hey, we love Salvation Army music, but there's so much more music out there. Why don't you play this or that? Uh, the issue being that we don't own the copyright to those songs. Uh, the except we do have a streaming license um, through CCLI, um, which covers... Um, um, performed, so live performance music. Uh, so we are covered that way. But it does not cover for videos. And so as much as I loved that, I, I loved the video of Larnell Harris and Sandy Patty. Uh, we don't own the copyright to it. Uh, Facebook realized it and they shut us down. Um, and please, that is, I'm not saying that we need to be mad at Facebook. You know what? There are policies and procedures that we have to follow if we are going to use Facebook. And I broke the rule. They saw that and they took the appropriate action and they, they stopped our feed. Um, it's no different than if I were to break a policy or procedure of the Salvation Army, a minute. If I went against a minute, um, then I would have to um, deal with the consequences. So we dealt with the consequences today of playing a song, a video that we do not own the copyright to. And so Facebook shut us down. Uh, yeah, Chris. Oops. <laughs> um, you know, we've, we've done so well these weeks, and um, Facebook did what they had to do. So, um, but you know what? Um, I don't know if how much of that song you heard, but in that, what I heard, the, the, the phrase, the line that spoke to me this morning is, all that I've done before doesn't matter anymore because I've just seen Jesus. Oh, what that's such a powerful song. I invite you to um, go to YouTube and find, type in, I've just seen Jesus. There are, there have to be eight performances of Larnell Harris and Sandy Patty performing that powerful song, and every one is powerful. And there are other performers um, who do the same song, and I encourage you to go out and listen to the whole thing. Um, it's just amazing. I've just seen Jesus. Wow. Do you remember that day? Do you remember that day? I do. I remember that day. So, today, we're going to be talking about Jesus walking on the Emmaus Road with the two men walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Now, I have to tell you, um, quite frequently, when I'm driving, I use the map app on my cell phone. I type in the address, and uh, British Dave will give me turn-by-turn -turn directions to my final destination. <laughs> my wife, my wife prefers to use Waze um, with Cookie Monster giving turn-by-turn -turn directions. So it's kind of interesting. I have British Dave telling me where to go and Cookie Monster telling me where to go. You know, there are several reasons why I use uh, the map app for directions. Um, like today, I have my contacts, and I wear my contacts most days. And they're great for when I'm doing things like preaching, as I am now, or if I'm at my desk and working on the computer, or if I'm in the band playing music, my contacts 
are perfect, but they're terrible when I'm driving. You see, because I have no distance vision with my contacts. I can't see a street name on a street sign until I'm right up on it. And what happens is I get people behind me honking their horns because they're irritated because I'm driving so slow because I can't I don't want to miss the street sign. That's one reason. Another reason I use the app, um, a couple years ago, in our previous appointment, um, I was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer. Most days I'm unaffected by that and I can function without any issues. Um, but there have been days, there have been situations um, when I, as I'm driving, I'll just not know where I am or where I'm going. And in those times, if I'm alone, um, thankfully I've never been alone when it's happened, I know I go to my phone, I go to my map app, and in the destination I select home. And problem will be averted. Probably the reason why I use the map app most is because I get distracted and I miss my turn. Major Linda and I will be talking and I'll forget about watching and listening and I'll just keep driving and I'm going, I don't know where I am. Or um, if I'm thinking and I'm trying to process something, um, maybe process a thought listening to a song or an advertisement on the radio or Spotify, um, it will get my attention. And I am so mentally focused on my thought or I'm focused on the song or the ad, I miss my turn. Um, my mind is consumed with my thought or that song, the ad, and at, at some points I'll go, uh-oh, something is amiss here. I'll pull off the road, load the map app, and then put in the address and get back on track to my destination. Well, in our scripture passage this morning, the two men are walking toward Emmaus from Jerusalem. It's late in the day, and they're walking west from Jerusalem. It's about seven miles. They're walking into the sunset. And they're talking about everything that's happened in the last three days. Now, there are some folks who believe that the sun, you've seen how at sunset, it can just be a dazzling setting sun. And maybe that because of that sunlight, the two men are blinded to the identity of the traveler who joins them. But I wonder if the two men weren't so caught up in themselves and their conversation and in the circumstances and the problems of the last three days that they didn't recognize Jesus. Now, as we read through this passage of Scripture, there's no doubt that they had heard Jesus at, during his ministry they heard him tell some of his parables. They heard him teach what he taught about himself. But they don't recognize Jesus. Mary had the same situation in John 20, 14. We read about it last Sunday. There she was at the tomb, consumed with grief and crying, and Jesus was standing right next to her, and she didn't recognize him. When you read John 20, or I'm sorry, John 21, um, the disciples they're out in a boat, and they're fishing. And Jesus is standing on the shore, and they don't recognize Jesus. Mary was consumed with the thought that the body of Jesus had been stolen. The disciples were 
um, so caught up in catching fish, no pun intended, um, that they felt lost in their grief and despair. It was as if they weren't expecting to see Jesus. And the same can happen to us. When we quit looking for Jesus, we get lost. When we take our eyes off of Jesus, we stumble. We have to keep our eyes on Christ. We need to keep focused on the blessed hope. You know, the news of Jesus' crucifixion, it spread throughout Jerusalem. It was the talk of the town. You know, there were so many folks in Jerusalem um, that week because um, it was Passover. And so pilgr Jewish pilgrims were coming everywhere to be in Jerusalem. So we, we come into um, verse 17, and Jesus asks, what are you talking about? What's wrong? Why are you so sad? And, and the men couldn't believe that someone didn't know what had just happened. <laughs> that would be like someone today coming up to my wife and I and asking, Why are you wearing mas a mask and gloves? Why are so many people staying at home? Why are people staying inside? Why are restaurants closed? And they would say, what? Don't you know what's going on? And so these two men, they tell their unknown traveler that Jesus, a prophet, had been crucified by the religious leaders and the rulers they knew who Jesus was, and they gave testimony to this man of who Jesus was. And just like them, when questioned, we need to be ready to give witness to others of what Jesus did for each of us, how his life has changed ours. They gave witness to the gospel. They told what, what had happened to Jesus. But here's the thing. These two men think Jesus is dead. They didn't believe at this point that Jesus had risen. You see, what they had been expecting, and he they tell us, is that they were expecting Jesus to redeem Israel. And there were a lot of people who believed that the Messiah was going to come as a military and political leader. They weren't expecting the Messiah to come to save mankind from the slavery of sin. They were looking for a Messiah that was going to save them from Roman occupation. And many people lost hope when Jesus died on the cross. Their hopes and their dreams were shattered. And these two men now are filled with regret and remorse. These are the words of two men whose hopes and dreams were dead and buried. They explain to Jesus why they're feeling the way they were, why they were sad and confused. People knew that the tomb was empty, but they couldn't believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. And even though the women told about his resurrection, even though it had been verified by some of the disciples, these two men still can't believe it. Folks, we can't allow our emotions 
We can't allow what we're feeling to control what we believe. We're starting week five. For others, it's much longer depending on where you're living. We're starting week five of COVID-19 experience here in Florida. Regardless of what you're feeling right now, regardless of what you might be told, God is in control. I have my moments when I feel this is getting out of control. It's more than I can handle. But I can't allow my emotions to guide me. Our emotions are going to lead us down a road to a place where we should not be. We have to follow the teachings of Jesus. We must be led by the word of God and believe what we know to be truth. And so Jesus lets them talk, lets them get it out. And then as we get into verse 25, Jesus corrects them. And he refers to um, the prophets. All of scripture he shares with them. You see, these two men, they had the head knowledge. But they had no heart knowledge yet. We can't read the Bible with the, inten- with the intention of satisfying our intellect, of just wanting to learn, to know. We can't read the Bible like we would read a history book or a science book, a book on psychology or a math book. The Bible isn't just intellectual knowledge. The Bible is about life. It's about a relationship. It's about a journey. Even though these two men knew the prophecies, they didn't understand that Jesus' suffering was for his glory. They couldn't understand why God hadn't interceded. And they weren't ready for the reversal of their human expectations with the realities of God's kingdom. Their focus was off. And as they get closer to the village... I'm sure that they're beginning to feel hungry and they're looking forward um, to resting from their walk from Jerusalem. And in verse 28, they ask Jesus to stay and have supper with them. Yeah, they're hungry. And I think the two were enjoying their time with their unknown traveler. I think just as much as they were hungry for a meal, the two men were hungry from more of what they were hearing. I think it's interesting um, that Luke writes that Jesus acted as if he was going further. Don't misunderstand this statement. Jesus acted like he was going further. Folks, Jesus doesn't play games. Jesus doesn't pretend. The fact is, Jesus wasn't going to force himself on the two men, just as he is not going to force himself on you or I. He waited for them to invite him to join them at their home, and they insisted that he join them. Good for them. You know what? God has given us the greatest and most dangerous gift in the world, the gift of free will. The same is true with my map app. 
I can follow the directions or I can choose my own way. Perfect example, Major Linda and I were driving back from Port St. Lucie. Uh, we had been visiting with um, our son and daughter-in-law, Bob and Debbie, and our grandson, Hunter. I put our address in the map and started home. Now, I was pretty sure I knew how to get from their house to where I needed to be. But I used the app for confidence. And as we got in, started the, the trip home, the, the app had us get on 95 headed north. And I said, that does not seem right. I'm not sure what's wrong here. Google Maps has gotten it wrong. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go the way I think is right. And I headed to the Florida Turnpike. Sure enough, drove to the Turnpike, got on the Turnpike. We hadn't gone more than a mile and we were stopped in traffic for more than an hour. I should have followed the map app. It was aware of situations that I couldn't see and I wasn't aware of. And the same is true for us. We need to follow the directions that we are given in God's Word. You see, we see a very limited... <coughs> We see a very limited image of the picture. God sees the whole picture. He knows the way. And we need to follow him. The two men, they insisted that Jesus had have supper with them. And you know, there's a lot to be said for Christian fellowship and meals together. Yeah. <laughs> Major Linda and I have been talking about how much we miss uh, you all. And um, we miss the meals that we have together at the core building. Our, our, our World Services breakfast. Thanksgiving. Our Christmas social. Even those times when we're able to go out and eat with some of you after meetings. We miss the opportunity to talk about life. And I'm always encouraged as I hear you share about your life and your ministry and how God has worked and is continues to work in your life. And my spirit is, is lifted as I'm reminded through you of the way that, God's, that God works. These are Jesus meetings. And in verse 30, the two men are having a Jesus meeting. They don't know it. But Jesus takes the bread and he has it in his hand and he blesses it. And then he begins to break it and shares the bread with them. And suddenly their eyes are opened. You know, I have this mental image of Jesus there sitting with these two men. Bread in his hands. And he prays. Praise God's blessing on the meal that they're, that they're going to be having. And he begins to break off the bread. And give it to them. And they're watching him. And they see his hands. I wonder. Were these two men with Jesus. When the 5,000 were fed. As they're looking at his hands. And as he's breaking the bread at their table. They remember 
those hands. And they realized right there, right then, their eyes are opened. I've just seen Jesus. It didn't take a big miracle. Just the simple act of breaking bread. You know, too often, people are so busy looking for the big miracles they, that, that they can't see the ordinary miracles right in front of them. Oh gosh, I'll tell you. I would love to have big, flashing, digital billboard signs giving me directions. Very rarely does that happen. Most days, I need to keep my eyes open and looking for the everyday, ordinary road signs. One of the men asked the other, Didn't our heart burn within us while, we, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? I had considered titling my sermon, Do You Have Heartburn? That's a good thing in this instance. The two men, they were walking into the sunset, both literally and figuratively. But as Christians, our journey isn't into a sunset, but to a sunrise. In their sorrow and their disappointment, Jesus joined these two men and gave them GPS, God's positioning system. Jesus set them on the right path. Remember my trip from Port St. Lucie that I told you about to here in Inverness? With every turn that I made, every wrong turn that I made, headed towards the turnpike, British Dave would tell me, redirecting. Every attempt to get me back on the right road. Redirecting. 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 And that's what Jesus did for these two on the Emmaus Road. He got them redirected. Their sorrow and disappointment became joy and happiness. And verses 33 to 35, they, we read, Luke tells us how they came back to Jerusalem. They left what they were doing and immediately they went back and they told the disciples, I've just seen Jesus. I tell you, he's alive. All that I've done before doesn't matter anymore. They were telling the good news that happened in their life. They were giving witness to others of what Christ had done for them. And I ask you this morning, what road are you on? Is it going to take you to a sunset or to a sunrise? I'm reminded of the chorus of the song that my parents often sang as a duet in our home core. Relates to the experiences of these two on the Emmaus Road. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own.
and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Oh, I pray that on this journey, this emotional journey, that our eyes will be open and that in this journey we will allow the Lord to walk before us as our guide. We're following him, not our emotions, not what we're feeling. We're following him. That while we're on this journey, though we may feel alone and maybe we are isolated, Jesus walks beside us as our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our grief to bear, we can give it to him. He walks before us as our guide. He'll walk beside us as our friend. He'll walk behind us as our protection. I fear for those who feel and have even said to us, oh, I'm not worried about this. I've, got, I've overcome bigger things. May God be our protection. I've just seen Jesus. Would you pray with me? Lord, open our eyes. Without the gift of your revelation, our eyes are kept from recognizing you. Come before us, Lord, suddenly, unexpectedly. Come in all your glory so that we can proclaim to a world in despair that we have seen the risen Lord. And stay with us, Lord, in every part of our journey, no matter how full of doubt or fear we may be. Through your Holy Spirit, we pray that you'll open our eyes. Help us to see you as our risen Lord in all your beauty and all your loving power. Lord, Luke's account of your appearance tells us so much about you. You're not a passive God, but you are a pursuer seeking us. And you're not just a gentle, nice friend, but you're a father who speaks the truth in love. And you're not an intimidating, overpowering presence, but, but you're a patient teacher. And you're not an isolated prophet, but you're a guest. You're a host whose true character is seen in fellowship. We praise you, Lord, as our patient teacher and our ever-pursuing Lord. Journey with us, Father. Stay with us. And it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Now, friends, again, um, sorry for the interruption of service. I've learned my lesson. Facebook is true. Um, there, so only Army copyrighted songs. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And now I ask that you receive this blessing and benediction from Hebrews chapter 13. And now, may the God of peace, 
who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good work that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We look forward to seeing you here on Thursday. God bless you. Have a blessed day.